Hey you guys, Jessie here from Urban Legends Antiques. And this week I am bringing to you not a success story, but an epic fail. Dun, 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 epic fail. Rui, are you the epic fail? So I had leftover paint from Carts and Millie from my thrift flip mystery box challenge that I had done and I wanted to try it out on some other things. I had tried it out on wood, on chalk, on glass, but I hadn't painted any furniture with it. So I decided I was going to use the rest of it and paint some furniture. My first trash to treasure chair that I found was this one and it was on the side of the road. We picked it up and I liked the bones of it. I thought it had a really cool back and I decided I was going to use the same paint from my previous video, Carts and Millie paint. This one I'm going to do in the blue hole. I end up sniffing a lot of the paints that I use, um, not for fun, but just, I have like a really sensitive smell, I guess, and I can smell chalk or earthy scents in them sometimes. Sometimes I can smell like latex, and this paint smelled really good. It didn't have any of like those weird scents. It had a really clean smell to it. I also thought that this was a beautiful color, and I knew that I wanted to reupholster this chair in like a blue color for summertime since everyone's going to be out sailing out where i live i wanted to have like a nice blue beachy chair in my booth other than giving this chair a quick wipe down i didn't do any prep work to it i just got to painting and i was hoping that there would be some texture that would shine through because i'm planning on using a wax on this chair so i want some texture to catch the wax this little filigree uh, detail on the back of the chair is the reason that I picked it up from the side of the road. I just thought it was really, really pretty and I thought it would look super cool painted with some wax on it. Over the years, I've learned that if drips are gonna happen, you want them to happen on the back of a chair, especially if there's like little carved details like this one does. You want the drips to happen on the back where they're easy to clean up versus on the front where it's carved and it's hard to get in there to fix them. That's why I paint the front of the chair first and then the back and then I'll kind of go from like front to back and fix any little drips or extra splotches of paint I see. Hi! I'm using white wax instead of my go-to clear or black wax, so I'm doing something different and I'm using a Paint Pixie um, waxing brush and I'm just doing section by section, putting on the white wax and then wiping it off with a paper towel afterwards. So while I'm waxing this piece, Chuck came in with the measuring tape and he's taking measurements for the seat. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Urban Legends Antiques, and I have a website with items available to ship, www.urbanlegendsantiques.com. There are bristles coming off of my paint pixie brush. I know everyone talks about how great and wonderful paint pixie brushes are, but this is like the third or fourth little like fibrous hair that I've had to pull off of my piece from my waxing brush. If I'm gonna buy a waxing brush for like $8 from Walmart and bristles come off, okay, fine. But I paid over $30 for that brush and I was not impressed. We are gonna cut a template out for the seat out of cardboard before we cut it into the wood. I've also decided to try painting an upholstered chair. I wanna paint the fabric of this chair and I've watched numerous videos, including the Debbie's Design Diary videos, and I feel like I can do it. When I went to Debbie's Design Diary video bootcamp, um, we were painting something and then we were gonna learn how to video it correctly. And one of the options was an upholstered couch that I was so excited to try. But unfortunately, it had been chosen by somebody else. If you watch the video, you'll see what I painted and I think it came out fine in the end. I loved what I had, but I'm, I still want to try to paint something. Like I still have the paint the upholstery bug.
In Debbie's video, she says that you need to get your fabric really, really wet before you start to paint, which is what I did. I chose Carts and Millie Paint Again in Pine Tree. I just have this one 375 ml bottle, so I'm a little bit nervous. This is all I have, but I figure if I mess up, I'll just use some of the blue paint. Um, this was a Curb Alert chair, so I didn't invest anything into it other than the paint and the tape that I'm using. So I'm comfortable taking this risk. Debbie also recommends using a fabric that's tightly woven if you want to paint it. And mine, it does have a tight weave to it, but it's like a jacquard. So there is like a an extra layer on it. So I'm not sure how this is going to work in the end, but I just really wanted to try it. I was super excited to do it and I just, I went for it. The more that I paint this fabric, the more that I like the color of it. I think it's going to look really good. I'm not sure if it's going to be soft in the end or not. Um, I didn't water down my paint like was recommended. I just sprayed the fabric and then went in straight with the paint. I am going to try to sand it afterwards to do the dyeing effect. And I think that I need to go like up and down and then left to right on the fabric as well um, to make sure that it um, blends really, really well. So the whole front of the chair has been painted with its first coat of paint and I was just struggling with getting this little backside so I just turned it around so I could get the back part of the seat right here. I'm checking the paint on the front of the chair and you want it to look like this. You're actually dyeing the fabric so you want your paint to be really watery and thin. I'm using an old 220 grit sanding block to sand this chair and I noticed that the longer that I sanded it and the more that I sanded it, it was like the greener the chair got. I think it was helping the fabric to absorb the paint better. I'm doing the exact same thing to the back of the chair that I did to the front. I'm spraying it with water and getting it nice and wet and then I'm painting it. I like the contrast between the painted fabric and the non-painted fabric. It almost has like a blending waterfall effect before I put more paint on and I just think it's really cool. I was just vibing off of this look the whole time. I'm using long brush strokes left to right and up and down to use the paint to dye the fabric. And then same with the front, I'm using the sanding block to sand the fabric and it's helping the fabric absorb the paint better. I think I need to mention that I am sanding the fabric while it's still wet. Okay, here we are going with our second coat of paint. I'm not gonna show the whole process on this because I think I did like pretty in depth with the first run through to show you guys how to spray and paint and sand. We've moved back into the garage where Chuck took his cardboard template that he cut out for the seat and now he's using it on the wood so he can cut out the wood seat. The piece of plywood we bought was half an inch thick and it was two feet by four feet and it cost us $18. When we had checked the prices at the depot to buy a piece of plywood like we normally buy, which is like six by eight, it was like $90. That was insane. So I was like, nope, cut it to size, please. Thank you, sir. Got a seat for $18 with some scrap wood that I guarantee you we are saving for another piece. We normally save our seat bases from chairs. If we can't salvage them, we save the seat at least, but um, I think we've just used them all because we had like, I think six maybe, and we couldn't find any. And I know we've done a lot of chairs recently. Chuck always sands the edges of the seat when he cuts them out, just to make sure that no one gets any splinters in their tushy. <laughs> Especially me, because I would be mad. <laughs> And there you have it, a brand new seat ready for some cushion and some upholstery fabric. I use high density foam for my seat cushions and we just took two pieces that were left over from another project and we glued them together and then I'm putting the um, underlay down and then cutting it to size before I put my upholstery fabric on. Giving my fabric a quick measure and checking it on all sides to make sure that when I fold and tuck it, I'll have room to staple it down. Um, this fabric has like compasses and ships and everything on it. It's perfect for boating season. This is my favorite part of upholstering when I get to use my air stapler and staple the fabric onto the seat. Now that I've got it all stapled down, I'm just checking the front of it before I start doing my French pleats on the corners. 
To make a French pleat, you're going to staple up to almost the corner of your seat and then you're going to take that little bit that's left over and pull it down flat and put a staple there. Then you're going to fold the remaining fabric over on each side and make a nice tuck. Once you have it folded nicely or you have like the nice tuck, then you're just going to put some staples there to anchor it in place and then take the other piece and fold it over and staple that as well. When I'm stapling this close to my hands, I just do like a quick check before I'll like move my fingers out of the way before I staple. I always like to give my upholstered chairs a dust cover for a nice finished look. You absolutely don't have to do this. This is just my preference. I like to do this for my chairs. Now all this seat needs is a chair. Chuck's coming in at this point again. He's going to screw the seat onto the chair. One chair down and one to go. We repainted and reupholstered this chair so that it had like a nice beachy vibe to it. I wanted it to have a weathered look like it had been out exposed to the elements and I think we did that. Let me tell you, oh my goodness. The paint is beautiful, it smells wonderful. It went on so nicely and then I ruined it. Okay, I've let this chair dry for two days now and I'm just going back in and sanding the edges. There was some uh, spots that were a little bit rough and I noticed when I sanded them, they softened up. So I just decided to give the whole chair another sanding. Okay, now I'm spraying the chair down again in preparation for putting the clear coat on. I don't have um, any of the special clear coats that I've seen other painters use. I have Rust-Oleum clear coat, so that's what I'm using. I'm not gonna lie, I was really nervous when the clear coat was going on so white. It was almost like bubbling on, but I just kept going with it since I had already started. I mean, again, I found this chair on the side of the road, so I mean, you know, I'm not out that much money because I didn't actually purchase it. I have no plans of selling it in my store. If it comes out beautifully, we're keeping it. If not, I have no problem ripping the fabric off and just reupholstering it. So for me, this was like a really good learning slash experiment. Now that I've got the piece completely uh, covered with the clear coat, I'm going back in with my sanding block and I'm sanding up and down and left to right to help the fibers of the fabric absorb the clear coat. So it's working pretty well and I'm starting to relax and really, really sand and then, oh my gosh, what the heck? What is that? Oh my gosh, what do I do? When I say I work well under pressure, I mean it. This is a point where you can either cry, freak out, throw the piece away, or you can get to work and try and fix it. So I just poured water over the whole seat to try to help the clear coat absorb into the fabric as quickly as possible. I knew I was on a time crunch and I had to work really fast. For more DIY tips, tricks, and epic fails, please like and subscribe to my channel, Urban Legends Antiques and hit the notification bell so you can see more of these videos and share with your friends. Do you guys know any YouTubers that show their mess ups? Because I feel like all I see when I watch YouTube are these great, amazing transformations. It was so easy, it was so great, it was so wonderful. I never see people showing their mess ups. So if you guys know any YouTubers out there that show their fails, please comment below and let me know who they are so that way I can follow them. So all in all, I think I used three bottles of water on my chair. I dumped one on the seat and then I sprayed two on. And the ironic thing about this is that I ended up having to refill my little bowl of Rust-Oleum clear coat to finish the piece. This still was not enough clear coat for the whole chair.
I went back in with my same 220 grit sanding block. It was like a really old one, so a lot of the sandpaper had actually started to rub off. And I just scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed trying to get the um, clear coat to absorb into the fibers without stiffening up. The one thing that happened that was worrying me was that I started to reactivate some of the paint. So um, when I wipe it, you can see, I was trying to remove as much clear coat as possible, but you could see like the green paint coming off and it was worrying me that there would be um, like brown fabric showing in the end. Here's the clear coat that I'm using. And now that I've got the whole seat crisis taken care of, I moved on to the back part of the chair again. And just to give you an idea of how much water I sprayed onto it, I sprayed it and then it was like literally dripping off and it did this every single time. Like I made sure that the fabric was saturated with water before I painted it or put the clear coat on. And then you can see here on this close up that I did, like when I was like scrubbing the fabric, how it was starting to like foam and almost suds up. And that was worrying me. It did this really, really bad on the seat. And I was trying to like wipe some of the clear coat off, but then you saw the paint coming up too. So I was just trying to be a little bit careful with the back and not do that. This is about 10 minutes after the clear coat fiasco happened and it's absorbed in really, really well. I'm gonna wait for it to dry and see how it looks. I left the chair outside to dry in the summer sun for about four hours. And when I went to check on it, it looked really good. There was just a little bit of like crunchy crispiness right here on the edge where some of the clear coat had overflowed the seat. But all in all, I was happy with it compared with what had happened. All right, you guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Jessie from Urban Legends Antiques and thanks for coming along for the ride. And here's the chair. Here it is. And no paint on my butt. A little crispy right here from all of the clear coat, but not bad. You like the chair, Ruby? Huh? You like the chair? <laughs>